Welcome collectors, Kylo Collector here, and today we're going to talk about Tron props. So I got my deadly disc. Let's do this. All right, so here we have a disc from the original Tron movie. So this is considered like a plate. Yeah, so um, I don't know if I would eat off this, but it makes for a really good prop. So you can buy these. A lot of times they'll actually already be pre-signed by like the actor who played Tron or something like that so I think it's a good deal but do know that the paint on it it's pretty delicate so you definitely want to put this in a dishwasher but uh, just even touching it can kind of chip some of that paint off and then here is the identity disc from Tron Legacy the sequel and I really like this it lights up makes noise but uh, these are hard to find now because they came out for the movie at 2010 but they do still sell these in China at the Sh Disneyland Shanghai uh, gift shop for the ride. So there is a roller coaster ride for Tron called the Light Cycle Power Run. So you sit in it like it's a motorcycle and it's got a canopy over it. So it's kind of an indoor one. This would be really cool at night, I think. They're actually making one right now for Disney World and it's going to open in 2021. So I like these discs. They had a white one uh, for Flynn and a orange one for Rinsler and some people will customize these to make these a lot brighter look more like they do in the movie But I like it the way it is uh, mine has like some Chinese on it uh, the stand on it says Light cycle power run, but I put the cartridge on there that uh, makes a nice display and then here's the original figures from Tron So these are clear um, and then they had like a red and a yellow light cycle you could pull and make go forward and since they're translucent, you can kind of make them glow. So they were made by Tomy. Um, and then NECA, they re-released these with new card backs. And then actually made a blue light cycle. Okay, Diamond Select has made some new ones too. That are like 7 inches tall. And uh, for like Kingdom Hearts. So if you're a big fan of that. Um, I first played the Tron arcade game at 257. Which is like a uh, pac-man museum and bar restaurant in chicago so this is a really cool place we are in chicago check it out but i love this arcade cabinet to me it's so iconic just the way it glows just has a presence about it so it's like stepping into the movie when you step up to this cabinet so really beautiful design for sure the games on it are okay there's a couple mini games like here's a tank game based on space paranoids. Don't crash, yeah? <laughs> okay, so speaking of crashing, here's a light cycle game where you try to make your opponent crash, okay, when you leave your trail. And recently Lego came out with a set based on the light cycle so that's really cool all right here's the Atari 2600 deadly disc game so it looks pretty crude so I do have that cartridge they did an Intellivision version of it looks better okay but also extremely crude but your best bet is of course the arcade version of it and the cabinet for this also is very beautiful glows and everything There was also a Solar Sailor game, which is a weird game to be making, but they also made a Maze of Tron and Adventures of Tron. So they're just trying to capitalize on the fact that this movie is based on video games as much as possible. Not every great movie or great arcade game makes a great home video game. That's why when Mattel Electronics turned Tron into Tron Home Video Games, we made sure the excitement of Tron gameplay found its way into your home. 
You'll know it the moment you square off against a recognizer, if you last that long. Four great Tron games, two for Intellivision, two for Atari 2600. From Mattel Electronics, games as good as we say they are, maybe better. All right, in Disneyland in California, in the Hollywood section, they did something called Electronica uh, right before the movie came out at the end of 2010. So it had like the end of Lion Club from the movie and a Flynn's Arcade. So this lasted for about a year and a half. So you could actually go into Flynn's and play all these classic arcade games, just like the Tron arcade uh, cabinet, just like you saw in the movie. Uh, this was the only time there was actually a real Space Paranoids cabinet. This also had laser light shows and music and uh, the coins said Flynn's Arcade on them. So that's really cool. Okay, there was a Tron 2.0, kind of a first person shooter game. And uh, this was considered like the sequel. Now, of course, Tron Legacy is considered the true sequel. And they made a game to tie in with that uh, called Tron Evolution. And that's for... Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. So I think Disney kind of pushed this whole Tron revival because they didn't have Star Wars yet. And they wanted like a sci-fi franchise. And they already own Tron, so they thought, well, let's do this. But this game, it's kind of got some parkour stuff going on in it. But now that Disney does own Star Wars, I don't think we'll be seeing much from Tron anymore, unfortunately. Here is the Wii version of Tron Evolutions called battle grids and it's similar but you know it's gonna have more crude graphics and everything because it's all that Wii is capable of so they make it have that like cartoony look that a lot of Wii games have it's got motion controls it's kind of like Wii Sports so you just play all these different mini games as you would see in the movie but I thought it was pretty good, and it's super cheap right now, so it's a fun minigame style of game. Ow, Controls are kind of really wonky because it is motion control, but in the style of it, it's kind of cartoony, much like the Tron Uprising cartoon from Disney XD that only lasted one season. And if you're a fan of the song playing, this is Daft Punk, so they did the soundtrack, and this was their only... Uh, studio album that they had done for like eight years. So now I really like Tron Legacy, the 3D, and it was revolutionary to me. I saw it a whole bunch of times in the theater, and I've seen it on 3D TV. But I kind of feel like Disney reused the plot for The Last Jedi. Now, call me crazy, but I see a lot of similarities here. Okay, so we have you know movie franchise from the like 80s uh, with the hero, and they train the next generation who turns out to be evil. All right, and we have similar clothing and hair and beard and everything i mean it's kind of crazy I, I don't know if i'm just seeing this but they're reluctant to help out the new hero uh, and refuse and they just want to hide you know in isolation but then at the end there's a sacrifice um by the old hero so i don't know hello kyle i am playing Deadly this. <laughs> Thanks for watching! End of line.